So after a minor miracle in the way of South Shields, absolutely terrible end of season form, allowing us to take top spot in the league with only two games remaining in the last episode. Today we've somehow got a chance to win the league. I really don't understand how this has happened, but I'm delighted to be there. Can we secure our fifth league title of our first five seasons here at Chelmsford Town? Let's get into it. So as I said in the intro, we've got the chance to win the league today. We've got two games remaining with four points ahead of South Shields. That we've both sort of got a relatively easy game in we are taking on Darlington, who are 21st, and then we've got Warrington in 11th, which could be quite tough. Whereas South Shields have got Stafford Rangers in 9th, which could be a quite a tough game for them, although you'd expect them to win it still, and Buxton last. So last game of the season, I would definitely expect them to win if it comes down to that. But we've obviously got a very good chance of securing it before it gets to that point. Because even, obviously, even if they win against Stafford Rangers, if we manage to beat Darlington, we are guaranteed to be the, the champions. So it really is in our own hands to try and guarantee this. But as we've been over, I mean, their recent form has been atrocious for a team that have been pretty unstoppable for most of the season. I think they've been top for pretty much the entire season. So yeah, if we look at the positions throughout the season, we both had a pretty bad start to the season overall. I mean, they didn't do terribly in the first two games, but then very quickly dropped off, but managed to bounce back. And by match day 19, they were top of the league and have been there ever since pretty much until the last game. Whereas we started off in the relegation zone, actually 22nd. Well, after the first two games, we lost them both, ended up down here. But since then, it's been a relatively upward trajectory. I mean, we went up to second, is that? Is that second? Yeah, quite early on in the season. But then rapidly dropped off with a loss to Telford, a uh, draw against Brackley, a draw against Nuneaton, a loss to Geisley, a loss to Kingsley Town, and then a draw against Chester. But since then, at least, it has been a very upward trajectory. You know, we had a little bit of a blip here where we didn't win games. But apart from that, we've been very reliable. One other little bit of news to get caught up on, but that is it. Uh, we've had an offer in from Bradford Park Avenue for Matalus Aquino. They are in the Northern Premier League Premier Division, which is the one below us currently. And they're mid-table, so it wouldn't be a bad move for him. You know, he's not really playing at this level. And he's definitely well suited for the, the tier below us, I would say. Like, I think he sort of caps out around there. Although, you know, he has been very good in every season we've had, we've had him where he's played but he just hasn't really been able to get on the pitch this season. I mean, when he has played, he's been good, but he's not someone I can really rely on going forward, especially when we've got the prospect of being promoted this season, obviously. He hasn't really got games in front of Yeboa, Adiemo and Backwell. And to be honest, I'll be looking to upgrade at least one of those, I would have thought, at the end of this season. So I think we're just going to let him go. It's a little disappointing. He has been one of my favourite players since he joined the squad, even though he hasn't been playing all that much. But I wish him best for the future. And there we go. In a very quick turnaround, actually, he has agreed to join. I am going to delay it for a week just so we can secure the title with him here, hopefully. That will give us up until the 22nd. It's not the last day of the season, but we've got the game against Darlington where we will be lifting the trophy and hopefully he can get involved in the little party. I know that's a bit sentimental, beans as it's completely pointless, but you never know what could happen. If, if we let him leave and suddenly everyone decides to get injured, I would be absolutely fuming. We've got all the motivational news items coming in. Gofford rallying the troops. We've got Moncrief singing Yeboah's praises. And we've got the moment that every football manager player absolutely dreads a team meeting. <laughs> These can go absolutely any way. But we're going to probably ease expectations. That worked out well last season when we did it. And that's the recommended option. But yeah, I think I'm going to go with we just need one more win to become champions. And I'm so proud of every single one of you for getting this far. Everyone is buzzing at that. That was a relatively stress-free one. I agree with the boss. The title wasn't expected to win us this season. So let's not feel like we've failed should we not win. That's not the attitude I want. If you don't win, you have failed. But I'm not going to say that. <laughs> but anyway, the match is tomorrow. Let's get straight into that. And I think this is how we're going to be lining up for it. It's a relatively straightforward team other than a winger position. But we've got Jackson in goal, Hamblin, Shepard, Mitchell and Tanadre across the back. Gofford defensive mid, Archer and Morehouse centre midfield. Waldo out on the left, Burt's on the right and Yeboa up front. I was going to play Phil Smith out on the wing. I really like having him on the pitch, but he's basically replaced Bates on our bench. because inst So instead of a left back and left wing option, we've got a right back and right wing option. Both of our wing options can play either side, realistically. I mean, Waldo's not the best on the right, but a winger position's a winger position. You're going to do okay, you would have thought. 
apart from that, not many surprises. Uh, I've managed. I've put Lusquano on the bench just in case. You know, if we need him, we can bring him on. We've also got Backwell on there. I decided to sacrifice Adiemo for him just because Adiemo's had a pretty rotten run of form lately. So we're going to hope we can still win this. But okay, right. Let's get into the game. Team talk. Let's pump our fists. Let's give the fans a title party at full time. Uh, let's hope that doesn't come back to bite us. I'm going to try and get Yeboah, you know, happy because he's a little bit hit or miss, as we know. But yeah, we are lining up in our standard 4-3-3. And Darlington are in a 4-2-3-1. Seems to be coming up against this formation relatively often recently. Did we play Darlington earlier in the season? I think we might have done it on a live comp, I'm not sure. But either way, sixth minute, we've got a Gofford free kick outside the area. Is he going to shoot this? He does. Oh, and he nearly chips it into the top corner, curls it into the top corner. Their goalkeeper's also called Jackson. That's a little um, a little strange. Two Jacksons in goal at either end. So I've got Morehouse with the corner. Mitchell's attacking it. He's not going to manage to do anything, though. I'll get the curse off the screen. I apologise for that. Okay, now 13th minute. Our Jackson gets a long ball up, but Waldo does not get on the end of it. Mary and Oliver get the ball forward. Evans can't get into it. Morehouse picks it up, gets it out to Birchall. Yeboas looks to make a run and he, he's gone past the keeper. Oh my God. Jackson. Jackson is the most error prone name in the footballing, in the footballing world. What was this? I didn't think Yeboah was going to bother the run at first. I saw he started and then as soon as the pass was made, he seemed to slow down. Keeper comes out, tries to clear it, and Yeboah just sticks a boot in, knocks it past him, and away we go. Oliver. The throw in green now gets a cross in Scott with a header. No, Morehouse does pick it up though. We're going to counter attack. Long ball up to Yeboah again. We've got Birchall coming through the middle. No, we haven't. That would be Archer. Uh, Hamblin with a long ball over. Waldo can't get on the end of it. And they managed to get it away. Yep. Oh, a lovely ball, long ball over themselves, but no one cuts, no one gets to that. Hamblin to Archer and Shepard looks to punt this long. Yeboah isn't there. The defender takes too long on the ball, but isn't punished. And now Evans is one-on-one -on -one with our goalkeeper. And he's put in. That is a fantastic finish. Wow, that's... um. I did not expect him to score when he shot from there. But fair play to him. That was... Who's this that misses the header? Is it Mitchell? Yes, it is. And that's just a lovely curled left footer. Just inside the post. Not bad at all. Let me just quickly check how South Shields are doing. They're still drawing. So as things stand, we are still perfectly okay with the draw. But I'd obviously like to bring it into our hands and not go behind from this corner. Okay. Birch managed to get the ball away. As far as Maradoza or something. Uh, Mary with a curl in. And we look, Yeboa looks to get it away. Birchall taking a while on the ball, but he's found himself in a bit of space. He's going to look to put Waldo through, maybe? No. Put Yeboa through. And oh, Yeboah misses from just outside the six-yard box. Uh, it was a little questionable to go on his, right, on his right foot then from the angle he was at. But hopefully we won't rue that chance. We've had a very quiet period now. We're up to the 35th minute without any more action. That's like 15, 20 minutes without a highlight. Now we've got a Morehouse corner. We saw this exact highlight earlier. And Yeboah gets on the end of it and he managed to header it in at a far post. Come on. Okay. We're back in our own hands. It's a beautiful corner. Their defender. Oh, he does go for it. He just doesn't get manage to get on it. M Maruza. Okay, that is not now I've said, oh God, there's a kickoff highlight. Is this going to be brilliant for us or an absolute disaster? Long ball over. Evans looks to get on the end of it. He does take control. It's the ball out to Fitzmartin. Looks like there's going to be a cross coming in here. Good crossing, but Tanajo gets it away. Over to Goffin, at least, who gets it away. And, oh, we don't quite manage to get it out properly, though. Coddington has sent it straight back up the field. Scott with an acrobatic cross. And now Birchall picks up the cleared header. So they're just pumping this long. Evans on the ball again, and he's gone for the most outrageous side foot volley you're ever going to see. But no luck. Looks like we're going into half time now. Oh no, one more highlight first. Maroud's up with a throw in. Scott Green looks to chip it over. He does. Hambling cuts it out, gets it to Oliver. Long ball goes over. Fitzmartin's in a lot of space on this right hand side. 
Oh, but we managed to clear it again. Birchall just terrible control. What is he doing? Green, running along at midfield. Merry gets the ball over, but Scott, can't, it doesn't reach Scott at least. It's going to, what? Sorry, I don't really ever rewind mid-game, but what the fuck was that? <laughs> just... <laughs> it's the most powerful header I've ever seen in my life. Oh my God. Fitzmartin, Mary Hughes. He's got a lot of space he's running into here. Gets the cross in and falls to Evans. And it's headed just wide. That was a very long highlight. I think it was only about a minute of actual in-game time. But Jesus, it felt like it went on forever. And it's just constant pressure on our goal. But yeah, okay. So we've made it to half time. 2-1 up. Things are going well. I know you're capable of even better. Try and get everyone buzzing. They are. Do we need to make any tactical changes at all? We've got news item. I did get a news item through saying that Zach Mitchell's not had a great game. But I mean, he's on a 6.5. He could be worse. He's missed a couple of interceptions, including the one that led to the goal. But it's not the end of the world. Tanadre is looking complacent. So I'm actually going to take him off and put Phil Smith on. Phil Smith, more of a supporting winger. He's got, he's got a great pass in him. He's set up many a goal. So I don't think that's going to be a bad idea for us. And apart from that, let's get going with the second half. I very rarely make a half-time change if it's not been someone who's been terrible. Okay, now Hamblin with a throw in in the 50th minute. Gofford looks to get a cross in. I think he's going to pass this across, maybe? No, all the way back to Tommy Jackson. Okay. It's probably not a popular move with the, fan, but he, with the fans, but he, he was under a bit of pressure. So I don't understand why. Now Mitchell gets a long ball up. Morehouse gets an end of it. Is he going to rocket this? No, he's not. But Waldo should pick it up on that far side. Archer. Back to Shepard. Waldo doesn't get it. Through, but you've always got the ball. Oh, and he smashed it off the crossbar. Oh, my God. But now Morehouse has picked it up outside the box. But nothing comes of it. Hamblin gets the ball into the mixer again. A lot of pressure here, but... Apart from that one shot, we haven't really managed to create anything from it. And now Evans looks to break, but there's just no chance he's beating four defenders on his own. See, so Yeboah is looking quite knackered. I mean, it says he's injured, but he thinks he can shake off the knock. But I don't really want to take the risk, to be honest. And I think I might do the unthinkable at a 2-1 lead. And I'm going to bring on Matty Lusquano for his farewell appearance at the club. Can he secure us this league title? We've definitely got a better option on the bench in Tommy Blackwell, but... I've just got a feeling. I really hope I don't regret this. The ball comes in. Oh, Fitzmartin nearly managed to header it into the near top corner. That was very scary. And I've got a Shepherd free kick deep in our own half. He gets it up towards Lusaquino, but no such luck. Coddington now puts it through to Fitzmarin, and Evans has managed to smash it in. And he's offside. Oh my God. That was, um, that was terrifying. That was such a quick little pasture play there. First time pass is... Oh, he's, so close to being onside there. But no such luck. How are South Shields doing? They're losing 1-0. South Shields in the game that we thought they'd have, well, they'd have some problem with, but really should comfortably win, to be honest. It's not like Staff Stafford Rangers are not a good side, but South Shields are just, they've absolutely fallen apart these last few months. I really don't understand it. Okay, now we've got a Morehouse corner Gets the ball in. Headed out to Birchall. Gets the ball back to Mitchell. Absolutely rockets it and it goes slightly over. Didn't really trouble the keeper too much. Right, we're up to the 70th minute. Do we want to make another change maybe? I mean, no one's been particularly bad. Mitchell's rating is slowly dropping throughout the game. Everyone who's playing well is nervous. And he's on a 6.3 and he's pleased. I don't really understand that. Like He's, he's, he's having the time of his life despite not doing well at all. Can Backwell play left wing at all? He can play it okay. And I think I'm going to bring him on to give it a shot. But either way, we've got a Morehouse corner. Loops in towards the Sopano. Mitchell picks it outside the box. And Birchall blasts one in from outside the area. Ajani Birchall has just potentially secured Chelmsley Town the National League North Division title. That was unexpected. Lissacuano gets crowded out by four players. Mitchell just squares it. Birchall, first time rocket with his left foot. 
Jackson in there, maybe unsighted, stood no chance whatsoever. He's popped him down to a red rating, he's having an absolute nightmare in net. The duality of the two Jacksons. One of, we've got the yin and yang here. One of them is bad and one of them is good. And I'm just delighted that it's this way around because it's normally not, to be honest. Jackson's been okay this season. I'm sort of ripping him when I shouldn't be here. Uh, there's not really anything else I need to change here. We've got no, no more subs we can make. We'll let Hamblin take this throw in. And Shepard puts a long ball over. Lusaquino nearly manages to get a ball. Oh, he gets, gets his head onto it. Oh, I thought that came off the defender. But the commentary said he headed it towards the net. I mean, I don't know what he was trying from there, but it's okay. And we get it back to our Jackson. Drops it and passes it to Shepard. Another long ball up. Lusaquino doesn't get his head on that either. Now Mitchell manages to get it away. Shepard looks to start another counter-attack. Birch with a long ball over to Lusaquino. He's got five men in front of him. It's going out wide. He's going to get the pass in. Gets it back to Smith. And Morehouse with an absolute screamer. He's, put it, he's done it again. This man does not hit a soft shot. What is that? <laughs> that is unbelievable. I was not expecting him to shoot that. I was looking at Lusaquena going into the box and the ball just whizzed past him. Like, absolutely fantastic. We need more house shooting as often as we can. Look at their team, man. Their entire left side is red ratings. We've got one minute left. And, oh my God, we've managed to do it. I came into this season thinking mid-table would be a success if we could maybe try and nick a playoff spot. That would be incredible. And, you know, then you just need to win a few matches and you've got the chance. But here we are, winning the title. Tro the trophy gets passed to Ollie Gofford to raise above his head. <sighs> That's such a nice feeling. I cannot believe we managed to pull this off this season. We've been underdogs the entire way and I've just managed to nip them to it at the very end. South Shields fans must be absolutely fuming with how things have gone. The players must be very disappointed, but that is none of our concern right now. We are the National League North champions, and we're heading up to the National League. We have surpassed the halfway point of our journey. We've had five seasons, five league wins, and we're going into the National League to maybe try and do it again and get into the Football League. But we have, we have reached the pinnacle of non-league football now. And that is absolutely unbelievable. Considering early in this game, you know, we got an early goal and they equalised almost straight away afterwards. Yeah, two minutes between the two goals. And from that moment, I was not confident. I really thought things were going downhill for us and this was going to be an absolute nightmare of an afternoon. What a result. What a performance. Really just stamping our authority on the league. Outstretched arms. Absolutely brilliant. We are the champions. Fantastic. Nolan Tessier looking complacent. Well, that's what you get for lone players. They're just not invested as much. Oh, what a game. Right, let's get into the celebratory inbox items. And I can see one very important one there, but we'll leave that till last. Chelsea Town win the Vanarama National League North. Fantastic results along the way. Uh, we win the title there. Uh, KG, pre KG press conference from Elliot. Why is that important? The fans celebrate me. The light was on the face of Chelmsley Town fans everywhere. Uh, they, they declared that I was the prime reason for success. Pre-season odds 25 to 1. I'll be honest, I thought we'd be longer than that. That is still pretty crazy odds to win the league from. But I thought we would be like 100, to be honest. Uh, we managed to secure the title. The board have declared the triumph as a momentous occasion. I agree. Gofford praises me. Thank you very much, Ollie. The crown champions here in front of a crowd of 326. Absolutely pitiful, I'm not going to lie, but <laughs> we'll take it. That really shocked me then. Timmy Abraham is playing for Scunthorpe. I really thought that was Tammy, but no, that's his brother, isn't it? That is, yeah, Tammy Abraham's his brother. Is he any good? No, he's, I mean, he's got fantastic physicals and absolutely nothing else about him. The man is an athlete and does not really belong on a football field. <laughs> We've got through the, some of them are very happy news items at the very least, but this is the one that's going to make or break next season. Initial budgets. A 6,000 a week wage budget and a transfer budget of 14,000. 6,000, just off the top of my head, I think we're on about three and a half to 4,000 this season. 
Yeah, well, we're currently spending 3400 but we had 500 in the wage budget. So that's, we were at four, four, 3900 let's say, we were on. So we've got 2000 wage budget plus what we've got spare this season, which is an extra 500 on top of that. So 2.5,000. Now, do I think that's enough to guarantee us a quick promotion up? Not at all. But that is such a giant step up, considering last season, I think we got given like an extra 100 quid at the end of the season. I'm going to stop waffling now, and we're going to go through to the end of the season review. Two little quick bits of news. I have finally been accepted for my Continental B licence, now that we're going to, the club has back some money, which I don't know if I've covered in this video, but... Yeah, <laughs> but it's about time to be honest that I got accepted for this. I keep getting told that there's not enough money available. But being that I had a Continental C and we had multiple coaches, you know, Continental Pro license, Continental B, Continental A license. We've got coaches that are more qualified than the manager, which to me seems a little backwards. And here's a bit of news. Obviously, Luis Aquino is going to be leaving. I am sad to see him go. But, you know, I think that last game sort of showing. I mean, I know he only played 40 minutes and you can't really judge a player off that but he just couldn't really get into the game. I know we managed to keep the ball for the last goal, but that's about it. I'd be happy to welcome you back here anytime. You've been a wonderful servant to this club. So yeah, obviously very happy to have had him with us and wish him all the best in the future. So the final game of the season has now been played. We beat Warrington 2-0. I'll quickly go over the goals in a second, but the most surprising thing in this whole last game week, South Shields managed to win a game. <laughs> they managed to beat Buxton, bottom of the league, 4-2. I mean, they went 1-0 up, and then went 2-1 down, and I was just looking at it laughing. I, was, I could not believe just how bad they were. But, you know, 69th minute equaliser, and two goals later on, managed to secure them the victory. They finished on 94 points. We managed to get the triple digit, finishing on a perfect 100, 31 wins and 7 draws. Let's go over these Warrington goals just quickly. Well, there was no Warrington goals. There were Yeboa and Birchall goals. Warrington were probably the better team throughout, but we managed to take two good chances. First of all, Birchall puts a long ball over to Yeboa, who managed to slot it past the keeper without too many issues. And then a very similar thing happened when Snordre puts Birchall through, and he just takes it close to the keeper, slots it past him. Uh, in between these, we did actually have a penalty get taken by Warrington. And after I was dissing him in, in the last match for being a Jackson, Tommy steps up, makes a fantastic save there to keep it at 1-0 at the time. As you can see for the XG, they were the higher side throughout. They did have a couple of pretty good chances, but to be honest, they are ahead of us in about the XG that they got from that penalty. So if you take the penalty out of the equation, it was a relatively even match throughout. It wasn't as easy as I'd liked it to be, but it doesn't really matter because we came away with three points. Archer is set to go up to £130 a week at the end of this season. Is he on like 120 or 110? Not exactly bank breaking there. Jackson on form. Fantastic performance, my man. So yeah, just a quick update on the supporter profile as well. Uh, we gained an extra 200 social media followers. Doesn't really mean all that much, to be honest. We've still got 68 season ticket holders, which seems crazy low considering the standard of football people have been seeing. Uh, we have not maybe been playing as much entertaining football as we should do, but attacking direct and counter-attacking, they're all very pleased. And you can't really play entertaining, counter-attacking and attacking football. It doesn't make sense. So I really would like them to get rid of some of these in the coming season. We're expected next season to attempt to avoid relegation. So they're expecting it to be a very tough season for us. What happened with Williams? Alex Williams helped Chertsey win the Isthmian, Isthmian League Division 1 South Central. I really hate these low league division names. I'm so glad that those are in the past for us. But yeah, he has been fantastic out on loan this season. He managed to get 25 appearances. Average to 6.73, maybe not fantastic, but you know, he might be able to, you know, be a backup for us next season. Oh, that's absolutely insane. Um, what this, this, this has really shocked me. Increasing the standing area within the ground to hold a further thousand supporters. Oh, is this mandatory for being in the National League? You need like a because our stadium's only a 2,000 seater, isn't it? So, this has just really took me by surprise. Um, Club info, Dampson Park is a 1,000 capacity. Oh, is that reduced because of this? I feel like we've had more than 1,000 players there. I feel like it was two or 3,000. But yeah, maybe we need a larger stadium to go. Oh yeah, to comply with league requirements. I missed that line completely. I just saw the 95,000, which is 
oh, I've just got us out of a financial black hole. <laughs> and now we're heading straight back into one. We've closed one stand. Uh, it's taken about eight months to complete, which is mm, not great, being as you know, we might even get another promotion that time. It's unlikely, but still. Completed around Christmas. Okay, we're getting a we're getting a stadium increase. Uh, Jordan Shepherd. I, I saw Shepherd has increased. And I thought that was Talon Shepherd. Ah, I leave my under twenty ones recruiting to uh, is it director of football? It's something like that. I'm not really impressed in him coming in one hundred and fifty pound a week when these are his stats. Though I'll be honest. I mean, he's got four, three, and five for goalkeeping, and he's coming in to coach our young players. Not thrilled about that. I might have to have a look at these staff responsibilities. So, I mean, I wouldn't normally do this, but we're just going to have a quick look over the playoff results for the semi-final. Uh, Kingsland and Chester both won the first round games against Radcliffe and Scunthorpe, which was sort of as you'd expect it to go, being as how the season went. Although, you know, Scunthorpe did make a push at the end, but these two were really competing for that third place spot, which ended up getting snubbed away by Chorley, of all people, who I hadn't really mentioned at all throughout the season. So we'll see how these games go. South Shields managed to win another game and Chorley knock out Kings Lynn. Okay. So we've got a South Shields Chorley final to see who's coming up with us. And back to the news items. The spending begins. Uh, Callum Archer wants a new contract. And to be honest, I think I might give him one. Uh, he's got one year left on his. If I can get him on a couple years deal, that would be ideal. I just don't want to go up too much because he's up, he's up to 130 after the next game, which will be the first game of next season. But if I can get him on staying under 200, I think I'd be happy with that, to be honest. Even though that is almost doubling the wage he's been on for most of the season. Um, I'm going to try and get Gofford to resolve it first. I don't think it's going to work. No, it doesn't. But we'll see what happens. Um, my contract's no longer appropriate for a player of my current standing. And I want to talk about a new deal. He's angry. What are you angry about? This is the first time you're talking about it with us. The, uh, the club simply can't afford to offer a new deal. Would that work out? No? Okay, let's let's start on a new deal. You, you've got to try this, haven't you? Um, so what is he wanting? You know what? I forget. I've, I've spent that long talking to players who don't have agents. I just, I'm just i not expecting this. He wants £700 to £950 a week. What? Asking too much? That's still... He's lowered it to 600 If that's what someone the level that we've already got once we are screwed for trying to improve the team i feel like oh this is a little scary yeah 800 pound he wants i just don't have the finances to do that i was thinking like you know i might push to 200 and he, he's starting off for his four times that uh, i've realized i haven't been talking this whole time but i tried to offer him 200 and he's obviously not going for that um Offer him the requested wage, yeah, but that's the only thing that's wildly, you know, above what he should be getting. I'll give two fifty with a fifty percent promotion wage rise, so he'll get three seventy five for his second season. Could that work? And the goal scorer bonus, a top goal scorer bonus. <laughs> if our centre midfield deep line playmaker gets the top goal scorer, I'll happily give him three thousand five four hundred pound. I always put the international cap bonus in there because I know there's no chance they're ever going to get it. FA Cup, if we get the fourth round, I'll give you two grand. We should have made easily that money in that time. If we get promoted, I'll give you another 1500 we'll Get a relegation release clause in there. A sell-on fee percentage, 10%. I don't want to give him too much. Yeah, we'll just throw a load of bonuses at him and see if that works. I don't think it will. No, not at all. He's fuming. Okay, well, we've got the off-season to try and uh, resolve that. Hopefully it won't lead to anything too bad. And okay, another quick update. We've got the playoff final coming up today. South Shields against Chorley. Who is going to be in the National League with us? I'm kind of, for selfish reasons, I'm hoping Chorley. Just because I think we can beat them. How did we actually do against them this season? Beat them 2-1. And oh, we played them very early on and they beat us 2-1. So that's relatively even. But South Shields dealt with us twice. And we only won the league because of their absolute bottle in it as <laughs> you could surely have won South Shields have bottled it for a second time and are now resigned to spending another year in this division uh, I may well look at maybe trying to get a player or two of theirs because some of their players caused us some real trouble this season and they've got quite a few contracts expiring we look at contracts uh, Yanni Edwards is he any good? I mean he's not terrible for, I mean, £250 a week is a bit ridiculous for him. But he's not even on a contract. Uh, there's a lot of players here on way more money than I would give them. 
So maybe it's not going to be realistic, but then we're going to have this trouble absolutely anywhere we go, aren't we? Thinking about it. So we'll have to see. Anyway, the end of season review should finally be coming up in a second. So let's get forward to that. And of course, I hit the space bar once and it immediately pops up. No loading even. There's about half a second in between those two clips. So yeah, the end of season review is here. Charms of Town have won a trophy. Actually, a different looking trophy to previous seasons as well. This one's actually got a design to it. So I'm delighted to add that to our trophy cabinet. You probably saw it in the thumbnail. <laughs> so let's move to our new arrivals. Right, so who did we get? Leo Hamblin, we got a D, paying it over the odds. A Johnny Birch, we got a B for much lower wage than we'd expect. That's um, that's a surprise. What's Hamblin on? Hamblin's on 100. Birchall is on 150. I mean, Birchall is just an outstanding player. He's, he is the only player we've got in the sort of media dream 11 for our division. So he's definitely worth it. Tessier got an A+, plus, very good value for money. Agbadone, B-, minus. Backwell, C. I would, I would agree with that. 13 goals in sort of 26 appearances, if you include the subs. Talon Shepard, A+, plus, fantastic. I'm, I'm delighted with how he ended up playing as well. In the first probably five or so games he played, I thought, why the hell have I signed this guy? He has not been good at all. And then he has just become a staple of our back line as the season's gone on. Uh, Phil Smith only came in to make appearance in, in 16 games towards the back end of the season. Very happy with what he did. Four assists were very good from him. Lots of long balls out from right back. Uh, Tozo Marcel, four games, one goal. He could have been really good for us, but obviously got injured relatively early on. Adiemo, not brilliant. I agree. Archer, B+. Plus, I agree. And Jack Wadham got a D. I tend to agree. Like I said earlier in the season, I was after Jack Wadham for a while. I sort of wanted him at the end of the season before. At the beginning of the season before. Yeah, the beginning of the season before. And he ended up going to Dorchester Town. And I just couldn't get anywhere near him since then. But then once we got promoted, I thought I could bring him in. And uh, I mean, he was he played a lot. But I don't think that defensive mid position was our strongest this season. He didn't really perform too good. Um, we Gofford stepped in there quite a few times, although Gofford is obviously more of a centre back for us. But yeah, wasn't thrilled with him. Uh, how about outs? I mean, we got a B plus for Gaksha going. Who how's he got on at his new club? Eighteen games, eight goals, three assists. Oh, that's oh, this is actually his record here. I thought that was his record for us. So yeah, he's been very good for his new club, but it is, I was going to say, it's probably a lower standard, but I don't know if it even is because we're only in Panorama North-South. Uh, Will Evans at Gainsborough Trinity has been doing relatively well. Five goals, one assist for in 40 games. Not bad for a centre-back, especially at 35 years old. Deno Rule, they've only got a C for releasing him. He's been decent at his new club, but nothing fantastic. Ladassi, we got a C+. Plus. Which seems mad, Beans, as this transfer was a big part of why we ended up getting out of financial difficulties. I really thought that that would be mentioned here in some way. But the only thing that's actually been mentioned in the C-plus rating is the fact that we got a decent sell-on clause. And Lesser Quena going, I mean, it's irrelevant. He was going to be going in a couple of weeks anyway. I just decided to let him go a little earlier. Everyone could have commanded a loan fee. That's just what we always get. Alex Williams is the star man out on loan. Two goals and three appearances. Tony Jones got two goals and four assists. I said appearances for you. Yeah, either way. Dylan Helliwell out on loan did absolutely terrible. And I'm quite glad he's going to be leaving us because he's been a bit of an arse. Well, he was a bit of an arse. Uh, it was a season to remember. We got first place, average home attendance, 288. It's hilarious that we had a 9%. Is that is that an average capacity? Yeah, well, 9% would indicate it's a 3,000 seat at stadium, I want to say. Uh, but that's, we've averaged 288 and we're now adding an extra 1,000 seats to our ground because we're moving up to a league where it requires it. It's just ridiculous, uh, as you can see from the league form. Absolutely terrible start, pretty good middle, fantastic end. And that's the only reason we managed to get promotion. Managed to edge it late in the season, as you know. And Emirates FA Cup, second round, Very, we're pleased. How did this not get an A? Like, we got an A plus for winning the league. We made it past Macclesfield, or Macclesfield the league below us, so that's not too surprising. But we made it past Warsaw and impressed them so much they wanted to form a link with the club. That 3-0 victory away at Warsaw is one of the highlights of my season. I cannot believe that that only got us a B rating. We're unlucky against Doncaster. I mean, we drew at their place. 
and very easily, you know, if we'd actually shown up for that game, I think we could have won that. But no such luck. I mean, they, they, I, mean, I say that, they actually had about eight goals disallowed throughout the two for marginal loss size, didn't they? But yeah, FA Trophy, we got knocked out by South Shields. Well, who got the last laugh now, but guys? Fucked a lot of yeah. <laughs> we managed to get a B minus for that. Moments to remember. Biggest win was a 5-1 victory over Curzon Ashton. Match to remember, there you go. 3-0 victory over Warsaw. And the goal of the season being Yeboah's 80th minute strike. Running from inside the AFC Telford, half the striker skins the opponent before scoring a well-struck effort. Let's go and watch it. Uh, it's here, isn't it? Couldn't figure out where to click. Didn't actually start the game. I know it's back well started up front. So that's uh, a little, <laughs> little shocking. Um, didn't actually start really from inside his own half, I will say. But fantastic run straight through the whole team and then rockets it in. I do remember that finish. I didn't remember the run as such, but a beautiful finish from the main man up front. I mean, we had a lot of main men up front, but he was probably slightly our mainest man, I'd say. The success definitely helped the club finances. We got new sponsorship deals, which were worth 4.9 thousand. Slight help, but not massive. Uh, all of our annual revenue is up. We've got an, but like an extra 50% or so sponsorship. We've got a massive increase in broadcast revenue, beans as we've never had broadcast revenue before. We've got eight times the hospitality and corporate that we got in the previous season, double the competition prize money, and double the match day income. So fantastic. Oh, one downside though, and non-domestic sales has dropped. We were, we, I think we were earning one pound from that in previous seasons. So our one overseas fan has given up on us. Heartbreaking. Uh, how we lined up, I mean, most of this formation is very accurate because I, mean, I suppose we probably did start with Backwell a lot late in the season at the very least, but I feel like we gave Yeboa more games than him overall. But yeah, Birchall, Agbanone on the wings, Archer, Morehouse, Wadham in midfield, Hamblin, Mitchell, Gofford, Tanadre across the back with Jackson in goal. Cannot argue with that at all. And it's annoying that Tanadre is going to be leaving us because realistically looking at this lineup. I think the only positions that I would probably look to improve otherwise is striker and defensive mid. So Tanajo is going to also adding a right back to that. And you could probably do with a good centre-back because Shepard's been quite important for us this season. And we're playing Gofford there, who is, you know, he's sort of makeshift because he is a different, like he's classed in news reports as a centre-back now. But he's, I've always seen him as, you know, he can play both roles, but that if he needs to step into defensive mid, we obviously need someone who can play defence behind him. But either way, accolades. We won the Vanarama National League North Manager of the Month for April. I actually noticed this and didn't mention it because it was the last one of the season. I just thought, oh, I hadn't seen these. We must have won quite a few of these, so I'm not going to record it. But thinking about it, we haven't had Manager of the Month awards for the previous seasons. So this is the first Manager award we have ever received. So I'm a little bit disappointed that I didn't uh, record that. I mean, it was April, we had a 100% record. So we finished comfortably top of that. So it's no real surprise that we, we were chosen to win it. Fans player of the season, Tommy Jackson. Young player of the season, Tommy Jackson. Signing of the season, Hamblin. Goal was Yeboa. Top goal scorer, Agbenone, which he did play quite a bit up front for us, I suppose. But he was actually on the wing for most of that. 19 goals from him, though. He also had the most assists with 10. So he has been amazing for us. Uh, player of the match awards was Tommy Jackson with 10. Highest match average rating, 7.2 Tommy Jackson. Most passes complete, Talon Shepard, which I'm starting to realise that that is just a, whichever centre-back that Tommy Jackson says to pass the ball to, to lump it upfield, I feel like. Uh, there's a lot of playing around the back. Most league appearances by a player, the record is now with Tommy Jackson and the highest plant trump. And the highest transfer fee received went to Peter Ladassi going for 80,000. Competition awards, they got none. History in the making. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, your hard work and effort paid off on the pitch. Bear, bear, bear. We've seen this five times now. I say it's important to get off to a good start, but it reads just as true as ever for the Chelsea Town as they celebrate promotion. Um, actually, it doesn't ring true here at all. We got off to a pretty tragic start and pretty much clawed it back from sort of the end of the mid-season, I would say, up until, you know, the final third of the season. We were absolutely insane throughout the final third of the season. So it's definitely down to how we finished, not how we started. 
and we've got our manager timeline this is getting very long at this point uh so where are we so last season there we go we were crowned southern premier league central champions there i still don't know why we went from the southern premier league to the national league north but yeah we finished 104 points there so we've got a new assistant manager we've got jack morehouse signing a new two-year deal tommy jackson played his 111th match making him the lead appearance maker which is obviously still retained with 142 was it 149 Birchall joins Chelsea Town twice. We get two news items for that. That's how big it was. A giant killing. Chelsea Town pulled off a famous FA Trump, FA Trump trophy, FA Cup giant killing as they beat Skybet League Two team Warsaw three 0 uh, Farewell to a favourite. Leo Gaxa leaves. We then win the league, and club legend Matty Lusquino leaves for Bradford Park Avenue. Heartbreaking to see such a legend go, but had to be done. He was going to be off soon anyway. And I celebrated getting the Vanarama National League Manager of the Month Trophy award. Is it a trophy? It's not really a trophy. With a wistful eye on the empty space next to it in his, in his cabinet at home. What? Is that saying that we haven't won many awards? Well, thank you very much for that. Either way, let's finish that end of season review with that, with us getting a little dig from Sports Interactive. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for watching today. We have had just an incredible end to the season. I'm so glad you're all here to witness it with me. We will obviously be back at some point over the coming season. We will be back for whatever the equivalent of the Radcliffe game was this season. First game of next season, so I've got a whole off-season to get through. We've got a lot of transfer activity to try and do. Maybe some contracts to renew. I'm not sure about that. Uh, so we'll get through all of that. We'll have a big, massive catch-up. And we'll play the first game of next season in the next episode. So, yeah. Thank you very much for watching, as I said. So if you've enjoyed this season, maybe leave a like or comment down below. Maybe let me know what you'd want to do with our current squad. Because, you know, obviously we've got quite a few people leaving. I mean, well, we've got these four people leaving. Uh, but everyone else is off at the end of next season. So whose contract would you renew and whose wouldn't you? Because... We've obviously got quite a few good players here. I'd like to keep, you know, your Birchalls, your Agbanones. I'd like to keep an Archer, but I'm not sure that's going to be possible. And Morehouse beyond next season. But we'll have to see how that goes. And for everyone else, any feedback would definitely be appreciated because oh, it's not going to be easy. But yeah, like I said, I've got a lot to do. I should be back as soon as I can with the next episode. So subscribe to make sure you don't miss it. And I'll see you next time.